Happy New Year, chapter 2. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right, good to see you. All right, let's um, just ask God that God himself will speak to us. Ask God that he will speak to you specifically. And your mind will be receptive to receive the word of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ask him that whatever words he has prepared for you ahead of time. About this today's service and today's message. He will speak to you in Jesus name. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Father in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord we bless and thank you for loving us. For dying for us. For giving us your spirit. For ensuring that your spirit rests upon us. Thank you for empowering us for service. Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, that this morning you will anoint my tongue. You will help me to speak directly from you. Words of life, words of spirit and life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I ask that you help me to speak with simplicity, humility, accuracy and clarity in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I pray, O oh Lord, that we will not be influenced by any other spirit except the spirit of God this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you for this time, Lord. In Jesus' powerful name, we have prayed. The title of today's message is To the Ends of the Earth. To the Ends of the Earth. And we've read the scriptures, Acts chapter 1, 1 to 26. And the key verse is verse 8. Can we read verse 8, please, George? Verse 8. Praise God. Praise God. Ensure you have your Bible opened. Please read Acts. Chapter 1 and verse 8, church. Amen. I pray that the power of God that is resident in you and the one that is upon you will ensure that you walk in the power of the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Amen. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So when we were having Bible study yesterday, I asked Shepard that why are we going through Acts again? That of recent, we went through Acts, Ephesians and Nehemiah and the likes. And he told me because of the direction that... Um, the church is going to um, take, basically. So, um, like Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, that he does not have issue in repeating everything over and over again, that it's a safe guide to you. Praise God. Praise God. So, I have no issue in, in um, coming into the book of Acts again, because in this as we draw from the spirit of god will be empowered for what god is said to do in this year and beyond in the mighty name of jesus Amen. so when you read the whole book that, that, as we read okay let's start from verse one he said in my former book theophilus right so can somebody read luke chapter one and verse four real quick we want to move i have less than 25 minutes Luke's one and chapter one, verse one to four, please. Praise God. 
Luke is a scientist. Or was a scientist. Right? He was a physician. And over time, as I studied the Bible, I know why God normally uses some people to do some specific tasks. God speaks in diverse ways. Trust me. But people who interpret the voice of God, right, might be um, limited in vocabularies or in the way they interpret stuff. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, 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 so God using Luke to write the book of Luke. And Luke said he carefully investigated. So if you look at the book of Luke, it's coronal, uh, 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 timely, uh, uh, what's that word? There is a timeline of events, right? It, it was orderly, praise God. It was orderly in speaking about what Jesus began what? To do and to teach. What he began to do because the early years of Jesus before he launched his ministry, History, right, began as uh, Jesus has began to do so many things. Even Mary could know that this guy can actually turn this water to wine because he has been doing it right from time till he now actually go public. Praise the Lord. So Luke carefully examined all of these things, confirmed from people who were eyewitnesses. That was what he read, and he mentioned Theophilus in that very part. So the act of apostles is just a continuation of the book of Luke. In fact, like Shepard said yesterday, if you look at Luke and you actually end there to the last chapter of the book of Luke and you continue from verse 1 of Acts, you won't see no difference. The same pattern, the same careful observation, the same timeline of event that as it was recorded in these books. So he said in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. He began to do as to teach. So the first 30 years of Jesus were not public. Right? So Luke now said that he's addressing this book to God's lover. Theophilus means what? Friends of God, the people who love God. Right? He wants to really move quickly this morning. So after Luke had made careful inquiry into the facts he compiled an accurate and chronological account of Jesus' birth life, death and resurrection and then sent it to the man named Theophilus right, so this is the book we actually call the Gospel of Luke now we have before us the second of Luke's book, we call it the Acts of the Apostles because although it starts with a quick review of final days of Jesus on earth the purpose of the book is to show us how the church came to be amen, amen. how the apostles spread the gospel throughout the world amen. amen so when we say the ends of the world what does it even mean the ends of the world figuratively means that to an effort there's no limit hallelujah amen. praise god so it means that we, as witnesses of God, who the Spirit of God rests upon us, right? We have no limits in preaching the gospel, in opening the eyes of the blind, in releasing, in releasing captives. Amen. Amen. So there is no limit to what we can do by the Spirit of God. So Jesus has been tortured beyond comprehension. He died horribly. It was very obvious death. We saw how he was crucified with in excruciating pain. He has been buried in tomb with nobody actually believing that he could fulfill the promise he has repeatedly t um, told them at that time. He only said that after three days I'm to rise again. Mat Matthew 27 and 63. But early that Sunday morning, Jesus did rise from the dead. So as we read in 1 Corinthians 15 and uh, 15, 4 to 6 says that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas and to the twelve and that 
he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time most of whom are still living though some are falling asleep so after rising from the dead jesus walked with them he talked with them he allowed them to touch him he ate with them they were all confused because he planted the kingdom of god in them hallelujah so can we read from verse 2 to verse 4 church until the day he was taken up can we are we there let's go please until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the holy spirit to the apostles he had chosen after his suffering he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive Praise God. He gave them convincing proofs that, see, I'm still the same Jesus. I told you that I'll be back. I'm here. Touch me, feel me. So they interacted. They interacted. But Jesus was not going to stay that long. As he planted the convincing proofs about the kingdom of God to them their, their eyes were enlightened right remember that who are these people that Jesus is, is exactly talking to people who has abandoned him at the most important event in his life people who has neglected him when he was on the cross right people who who if you do you understand people he has served even the people he has done miracles and served, they were the ones saying crucifying him. He was abandoned. He was abandoned. So, so humanly speaking, when you have a friend that the first time you call him, oh, sorry, I have a card issue. Can you actually send me so so? I must say no. The second time you ask these friends again, probably another time, probably some weeks later or some month later, and you ask him again, guy, can you help me with this? And he said no. The third time. If you have that man on your list, would you want to consider him? No! No! So, consider how the events played out between Jesus and the disciples at that point in time. Humanly speaking, it doesn't have anything to do with them. As humans, they've told us that if the, the, um, the relationship is not beneficial, what? To cut them out. But Jesus, he came back to these people because he believed in them. He was around for 40 days. During that time, he taught them some essential truths. And one of the truths is the promise of the Spirit. Tell your neighbor, promise of the Spirit. Promise promise of the spirit why is it important to believe in the resurrection of jesus before we go further it is important because the resurrection of jesus first confirmed that whatever god has decided to do or say is going to fulfill it amen he taught us about obedience that for every obedience God is a rewarder of what? Every obedience to what's his purpose and his intent. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And most importantly, he gives us the power over sin. Hallelujah. And give us eternal life and the hope of Jesus returning. So we are not hopeless people. We are not powerless people. We have dominion over sin. With this, we are completely delivered. Salvation is a full package. We are completely delivered from power of sin and death. And we have eternal life 
and we have hope in Christ Jesus. So one of those things concerning the kingdom of God about which Jesus told the disciples was, was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the night before it was more that he told them that he was only with them a little while. But he promised them. He said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. Hallelujah. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because he does not see him or know him but you know him because he abides with you and he will be in you so so remember Jesus they, they went out two by two to preach the gospel right and they came back with testimonies that oh we saw Satan falling from do you understand so the spirit was with them at that point but in this part as Jesus began to plant the faith of the kingdom convincing proofs to them they receive the spirit and later we'll see that the spirit actually rests upon them as jesus has promised them so the spirit has been with them but will soon be in them so jesus resurrected resurrection made it possible for the disciples so so the spirit so so this spirit is what they actually need to wait for so Jesus is now telling them to wait in Jerusalem for, so, for something else. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, he actually told them. He said, you are to stay. Do not leave Jerusalem. But wait for the gifts my father promised. Which you've heard me speak about. Wait for the gift my father promised. So the disciples were being told, that they were going to explain yet another work of the Spirit in their lives. A powerful work at that. So he had been next to them. Now he's going to be in them and upon them. Soon he will come upon them. That is the baptism of the Spirit. So what is the work of the Spirit? Hallelujah. What? Why do we have the Spirit? Can we read Verse 6 to 8, please, George. Praise God. So, Jesus has said, taught them, or made them to understand God's plan at, at this point. Praise God. But what did the disciple want Jesus to do? Look at us. Look at the scriptures. To what? To restore what? Kingdom of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. He has made them know the plan of God. But it seems as everything is falling to what? To death air, or they don't really understand. And the next thing is that they gathered around him. No, so it's not just one person. They gathered around him and asked him, <laughs> Lord. Are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Someone, 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 someone would have picked offense that I would still on the same issue. Things that I was saying before I died. I've been saying it. You people still don't understand. Now, and I came back, spent 40 days with you, put convincing proof into you. You guys are still considered about this earthly kingdom. Thank God, Jesus is not saying, Father, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> Praise God. They were still asking him, Lord, are you restored the kingdom to Israel? Were they wrong? No. Jesus is that Messiah. But that is not what God wants to do at that time. Amen. So Jesus now responded. 
it is not for you to know the times or date the father has set by his word. By his word? Authority. About their question. That's said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus told them they have to be empowered. Leave this earthly stuff. Let's do the work of the kingdom. So there are so many Christians who would rather discuss theology, debates, eschatology, exegesis, Gnosis, epignosis, and the likes, than rather walk in the power of the Spirit. So, like I said, what was this power for? Do many preach that the power is to act strangely during service? It's not bad. But primarily, the power is to be witnesses. Tell your neighbor, be a witness. Tell your neighbor, be a witness. That is what the power is, is to fulfill the great commission. So, as disciples, we also may have another plan in our hearts. We may have another plan in our hearts. Even though God has told us clearly that this is what I really, I really want to do in this season. Just align yourself. Position yourself to what I really want to do. But because of our personal ambition, a misunderstanding we have the lights praise the lord we have the lights so so we have the light we should just ask god that god should help us to see what he wants us to see amen amen, amen. amen. so if the light is on and a blind man comes in can you see no, but the light is on. The light is on. So, if the light is on and someone who cannot, he cannot see, he is on. The light is always there. He cannot see. So we need our eyes to be wide open, and we need the light of God also, so that we understand and be witnesses for God. We need to be witnesses. Eyewitnesses of people. Praise God. In this case, these disciples, they saw Jesus' ministry first and they ate with him. But we as witnesses, we are to interact with Jesus through the scriptures. And plant convincing faith because there is power in the gospel. Without that, we will not be able to do eyewitness. So on Chinese TV, they always say eyewitnesses, right? People who saw some stuff that they were there when it happens. And they say, oh, these are eyewitnesses events. It's different from a reported event. So in this age, so how can we actually witness Jesus? It is through the scripture. So that when we go out to witness, we we'll witness as people who have experienced Jesus and encounter Jesus. So that we'll be able to fulfill the great commission. Mark 16 and 15 says, And he said to them, Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. The way to start in Jerusalem, then Judea and Samaria, and expand to the inner of the earth, the remotest parts of the earth. An eyewitness account is different from a reported account. So I want to encourage us that as we will start going to preach the gospel in campuses, let's witness Jesus as those, as one who has experienced his deliverance power. Amen. Deliverance from sin. As those, who, who, someone who has seen the light. So that we will not just say, ah, okay, they said Jesus is, is Lord. The, you understand? It's an important speech. 
And I know that for everyone seated here, we've all encountered Jesus through Bible studies, through daily bread, through prayer meetings. May God help us in Jesus' name. Can we read verse 9 to 11, church? After he said this, 9 to 11. Praise God. How did Jesus went back to the Father? Have you done kites before? You people are uh, city boys. <laughs> you've done kites before. Okay, you've done balloon before, right? And you can see how the balloon will just go up and you sit again. So that is exactly how Jesus went back. So Jesus had come to earthly naturally, born of Mary, right? But his exit was far from the common one we know. He was lifted up into the cloud and disappeared out of sight. Right? So, imagine, the disciples will be looking like this at their Savior, moving on, staring intently until they couldn't see him no more. So, but before they stood here for any length of time, two angels appeared beside them. So why are you guys looking like this? They will come back the same way. Amen. Jesus is going to come back the same way. And this event correlates with events in Revelation and Ezekiel. It's going to come back the same way. It's going to come back the same way. But in the meantime, what did they do? They obeyed Jesus. Jesus said them to what? Go to Jerusalem and wait for what? Wait for what? Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for what? The gift my father promised. So it was in Jerusalem, verse 12. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem. They obeyed. From the hill called the man. Mount of Olives. Actually, Jesus ascended into heaven from the Mount of Olives. So they arrived. And they wait for the outpouring of the Spirit of God. They waited. They waited. And what happened in verse 13? It said, when they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Ephesus, and son of Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer. They all joined together. They were of one mind, constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. I want somebody to read verse 14 in any other version. I just quickly want to point something out. Verse 14. Okay? Thank you. What version is that, sir? Shepard? Sir? Okay, BP. So, if you read some other versions, you see the words of one mind. That is the attitude of a church that really wants to move the way God wants them to move. Of one mind does not mean like we've seen in pastors 
wrong word message. He was talking about orchestras that different people sing different parts, play different instruments, right? But all of the song comes out as one. So we not only totally we agree on some stuff, but we have to be on one mind. different parts you can be super you can be prayer yeah but everything has to be for the furtherance of the gospel of jesus so we are looking at everybody has to be the same thing and think like you and all of us you'll be disappointed because why you are actually preparing program for uh, monthly meetings or some stuff it's a shame nobody to help And that does not mean that people should not play other parts. They have to play other parts. They have to play other roles. So they were of one mind in prayer. So if we are to move from 18 to 20 Sunday worship services attendance to 40, we have to be of one mind in prayer, in teaching. In going to campuses, we have FC, we have Saint Augustine. Yeah, that's to stop us. We have to be of one mind. It's very important for them. And as we begin to look at the other, the rest of the chapters in Acts, we will see that they were of one mind. They were under one accord. In another verse. So my personality tell me that what was the first card the apostles wrote? He said, under accord. <laughs> Praise God. You have to be on one mind. You have to be jointly together, constantly. Not today of one mind, tomorrow we are divided. And the rest of the passage speaks about how Judas was replaced. Because they understood from scriptures that David has mentioned that. So it was replaced with Matthias. Our focus is that we are to be witnesses. We have the power of God. God is with us. He said he will never leave you nor forsake us. That the power that we have received is not for signs and wonder majorly. It is to witness. So it is in witnesses that signs and wonders follow. And we saw that practically when Peter was preaching. I've seen great men of God, like Pastor Kumi. He doesn't show miracles, but miracles happen in that church when he's ministers. It is the Bible while he was teaching. And people will receive that miracle. In fact, they don't announce it. They don't. They don't announce it. So may God help us in Jesus' name. That in this year, every one of us, we have at least one sheep. Amen? Amen. That will teach the Bible and take care of. That will not be distracted by whatever that is going on in our lives. Amen? Amen. That will give ourselves to God. That will be eyewitnesses. We will be people who have experienced Jesus and are eager to share Jesus with other people. May God help us to be a vibrant church of one mind in Jesus' name. Amen. And may He help us to achieve the set purpose for His church at this season in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's read the key verse once more again. Verse 8. But you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. And to the end, so I don't know what God has planted in you. Pray about it. Just, just, just thank Him for the word He has planted. Thank Him, thank Him for the word He has planted in you. How He has opened. Luke actually went with Paul. He served also. He was not just writing about it. He experienced it. He was on the field. He was on the field. 
that law that will not just be blessed with the with the power of the Holy Spirit alone, that God will help us to put this in practice, to preach for the kingdom of God, to demonstrate His power, to be witnesses in campuses, and to raise at least a disciple for Jesus this year in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Shall we rise up on our feet as we sing in 499?